Hi everybody, C. Rudd here. Today we're going to be drawing Bay from the webcomic SailorSun.org. Now I'm going to, before we start off, I'm going to give you a little bit of back history of the Bay character. Bay didn't start off as a webcomic character. Back in the late 90s, myself as well as another writer, uh, Sailor Shadow, she writes, she runs the website SailorShadow.com, we collaborated and wrote Sailor Moon fan fiction. I started off writing Sailor Sun, and fan fiction and then she joined in and we wrote wrote it together. Since I was in college this worked out very well because all I had to do was writing. She did a lot of the of the, the grueling fixing, correcting and uh, work. So I just maintained the website and basically helped write the ideas. So that's that's how Bay started off. We started off as a fan fiction character. Well not no, not that fan fiction character. Bay started off as that fan fiction character. Most art's a lot cruder than it is nowadays, but that's how she started off. And then back when 2006 came around, when I started making a webcomic, I rehashed the character, rehashed the Honey and Bay characters for the webcomic. Now, that is the history of Bay. To get into the design element of Bay, back in the late 90s, there was this TV show, Lois Clark New Adventures Superman. And this show starred. Terry Hatcher. She was one of the main actors on the star as well as Dean Kane. Uh, Terry Hatcher, I remember in the late 90s, Terry Hatcher is actually the most, one of the most downloaded women. She's got to rank him the most downloaded woman in that time frame. Now this is back when we still used dial-up modems, we still used BBSs. Um, the internet was not really as big as it is now. Um, a lot of people didn't even have internet at home because it was too slow and it was too expensive. So that's that's saying something. You know, people that could get online would download her image. And I thought, you know, this is a nice base image for a character I want to make. So that Terry Hatcher was the base image for Bay. Now there are some other design elements. One is Dawn from uh, the Marvel comics. Uh, back then, I went to read comics, still do. But not as much as I did back then. I remember going to a comic book store, seeing a Don cover, and I was like, oh, that, that peekaboo bang style is actually rather interesting. I like the idea. And I decided to have that bang, or the bang style always covering her one of her eyes. And, you know, I probably got other ideas from other sources about, on that and developed from there. So that is how Bay came around. Now, I'm going to actually... Get out of the slideshow. I'm going to show you how I basically start drawing characters. That's the that was the explanation portion. Okay, so how do we draw characters? Now I always start off with the same for every character I do. Back when I started off, I was very rough. But I developed a system, and it's very similar to other systems, but but at the same time, it's it's uh, my own. Okay, so let's start off basically a stick figure. So we're gonna have the head here. I always put an X or a little bit of a, a guy on her head where her eyes are going to be um, falling. Remember, this is upper upper skull area. Draw I draw her chin off the circle, which is what a lot of artists do. They draw a circle, they draw a chin off the circle. And then a line. The line would basically represent where the spinal cord would be. Now, I, I like using diamonds for the upper body. That's just the way I developed. I some people use ovals. I like to use diamonds because it gives me a, a sense of where the shoulders are going to be, and where the where the the, the waist is going to be narrowing out, especially for female characters. And then I use a triangle for hips, so that way you get this hourglass figure. And we'll give her some legs. I'm not going to do a full body. I'm just going to do partial body here. So that is how I draw all my characters. From this, I can pretty much draw any characters. Honey, Crystal, any of my characters, Genie, any of my characters I could draw. The only difference that I have for different characters is the chin. Bay has, like I said, a more uh, longer chin. Honey has a narrower chin, as well as Crystal, as well as Genie. But this is Bay. Now that is Bay. So. Her eye, remember those two lines I made earlier? Well, that's where her eyes are generally going to go. The center line will be where her 
her nose would go. Now, in order to get proper the proper uh, portions, I should only have enough room to draw an eye in the center of her head. That's how you get it. You have three eyes in her face. And the center eye would not really be there. It's just used for spacing. Unfortunately, I started drawing these characters and started the style before I knew that. So I never really uh, implemented it. It's more of an archy style of, of, uh, of design. And yes, I always, even though Bay usually has an eye covering, or hair covering one of her eyes, I always do draw where her second eye is going to be, helps me get an idea perspective. So I usually just, at this point, I'll usually give me a rough idea where her bang is going to be. Bang for Bay always starts above her, her left eye, my, our right, her left. And it usually goes around to where her, um, well, where her breast breast level will be, that's where it usually ends. As well as Crystal that had the same has the same style or had the same style, because now she has a shorter hairstyle. Um, Crystal, as I said, hers always start off in the middle of her head. Bay starts above her right eye. And we give her the rest of her hair. <coughs> so there we got our hair. Now, if you're wondering why I'm drawing in blue, is because this is just a rough sketch. I'm actually going to ink in, make it a little better later on. But this is just how I'm starting off. Okay, so that's her head. And you can see that pretty much looks like Bay right there. Okay, now work on the rest of her. At this point, try to figure out what her, what her hand's going to be doing. Um, we'll just have her hands going out here. I don't, really, I don't really plan this out, so shoulder, elbow, hand. Shoulder, elbow, hand. That is how I figure out where her her hands are going to be. Okay, now in a ch on the chest area, her breasts, Bay is a size D. So basically how I try to usually work it is I try to go a little bit bigger than normal. Normal would be, what I would think normal would be, what most people would have, would be something like that. That would be the average uh, average woman's breast that you will see on an average person. But Bay is a D size, D cup, so she's a little bit bigger. Not much, not freakishly large, just a little bit. It gives me an idea where her, uh, her where her chest is. Give do the rough of the rest of her. Okay, their arms. Now you see this is just very rough. That's why I use blue. Because it's not, I'm not trying to make um, the final product right now. This is just me messing around. If I want, I don't like something, I can change it. I can remove it. In fact, I think she's actually a little bit taller than she should be right now. So I'm going to make her a little bit shorter. This is where you all get the adjustments in there. Okay, next is to decide what she's going to wear. We got the basics of her outline. So what she's going to wear now. Bay is a tomboy, so she usually sticks with uh, jeans or pants. Now, for most of you those who have read the comic, Bay is actually a transgender. She was, she was a boy. She was turned into a, a girl back when she first started her acting career. And um, she's just been a girl for so long, she's kind of accepted it. So she has that tomboy tendencies, but she's gotten used to being a girl over the past five years. So it's, it's kind of, when, you, when I try to decide what she's wearing, usually t-shirt. She likes blue because, you know, she's, she was a boy. But you know, I don't have to be, you don't have to marry to it because she's been a girl for a while. She, she's okay with with wearing with wearing girly stuff, she doesn't really like it, but she's okay with it. Uh, just to give you an example, you know, because I've never drawn it, I'm gonna draw her wearing a t-shirt and a skirt. Why? Because well, why the hell not? So she's wearing a baggy baggy shirt and a skirt, which I don't know how that's gonna work out. Doesn't matter how it work out at all, but it's just me us practicing. 
So there is the basics of Bay. Now, yes, you can turn off the video here, but what I usually do, I'll go into a green, make another layer, so don't mess up the layer I'm on, and I'll actually rough it out a little bit more. Now, I didn't do this, I didn't used to do this. Before I actually make the, make the character, and then I would just go right into inking. And some people do, and be honest, occasionally I do do that when I'm on a, on a cusp where I really have to get my co comic made, or I'm on a time crunch. Um, don't like doing it because I actually find this middle step actually helps me work out a lot of the detail. This is the step I use to more fine tune all the art. So that way I'm getting, I'm just differentiating what I want from all this extra, all these extra blue lines. So basically the green will be where the black line would go. And it's still okay to make adjustments and whatnot here. I don't have to follow the, the blue lines exactly because this blue line is just a guide. That's all it is. The blue line and even the green line is just a guide for when I get into inking. And one of the things I still have to work on improving is my hands. Uh, back when I first started, I used to do the midden style hands. And, and you know, it made life a lot easier, but the whole reason I started making these comics was to get myself practice at, at making things, at drawing things I don't usually draw. Because I drew, it was just basically I draw whatever, and there's no. Ch I wasn't challenging, challenging myself anymore. You know, I never made backgrounds. I never really drew anything other than just the main character. So that's why that's the reason I started Silverstone.org, To be honest with you, because Silverstone.org is not the final product. I originally started Silverstone.org with the idea of making Wolfpack. That was the original concept to make Wolfpack. And it still is the goal. But when I, I didn't want to make a cheap, crappy comic of Wolfpack. I want to make something decent. So I wanted to make sure I had a decent art style. And the only way I could do that was practice, practice, practice. So that's why I practice, practice, practice. I made a webcomic, Bay, or Silson.org, purely for practicing. That was the whole reason. I didn't really expect it to go um, as high as it's gone. I just never really thought about how I'm going to end the thing, so that's really how it happened. So this is Bay. Now what I'm going to do next, I was, I'm going to make another layer. I'm going to actually make these a little bit less visible. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to ink this in. Which is basically the same technique I used earlier. Let me change my brush here to make it a little more uh, fine. Now, if you're wondering, I'm using Adobe. No, you don't have to use Adobe. I don't. Adobe is just the product I've been using. I used Corel before. I used other software before. Uh, just Adobe seems to be the kind of industry standard, so I'm trying to get into using what everybody else is using. Uh, I still don't actually use Adobe for everything in the comic. For making a uh, actually drives Robert uh, in the. Robert Lubin Nuts in the, the editor for the for the comic, the Robert Intern actually. That was a little bit nuts because I use other programs to make the make the panels and whatnot, and it's not really doesn't really work well for him. I understand that, and I I do apologize to you, Robert, because you're probably gonna be watching this at some point. But it's just the way I, the way I've I've only changed a little bit at a time. I don't want to change too massively at a time. Because I don't know how to do anything. I make the drawing and do the coloring in Adobe. Then I copy and paste. Then I copy and paste it all over to Crow. And I make the uh, the speech bubbles and all that in Crow. And then I copy and paste it back to Adobe and put it all together. Okay, 
So like I said, you gotta remember that base the base the base bangs basically stops right around her uh, her breast level, right in the middle of her bust. That is where her bangs how far her bangs go. Now, yes, I do admit this is kind of an abnormal style. You don't see the style in everyday life. And that was originally the goal was to make something that is rather unique. And when we start out, she didn't have bangs, bangs this long. She just, she just had very short bangs. Now, if you remember back in uh, the earlier, earlier picture I showed you. Let me see if I can pull it up again. See, bangs, bangs weren't really that big. They weren't really that long. But over the course of comic and development and whatnot, we actually have developed a system where this is where his base bang is going to go. And if you drop the old crystal in her old style, that's where her bangs go to. Uh, give you a little bit of a, a little bit of a, this is a drawing bay, but to give you a little bit of insight on crystal. Crystal is actually bay with pink hair and shorter. Her proportions are the same. You know, bay Bay is a, a B, or sorry, Bay is a D, and Crystal's a D. But the only difference is Crystal is has a rounder face, so she's more like honey around with her face, more oval shape, and she has uh, she's shorter. She's actually the shortest. She's the shortest character in, of the regular cast. So she looks a little. Bit, she looks different, but she's actually. Bay with pink hair, and like I said, the the hair division is on her, above her eye. Her hair, the hair comes out from above her eye, or separates above her eye. Or sorry, the hair separates above base eye and separates in the center of Chris, Crystal's head. That's the only other difference. If you could draw Bay, you should be able to draw Crystal without problem. Now, Honey is a little bit more, more of a different character, and you know, depending on the reception of this, I will like draw how to draw Honey and how to draw Crystal. But we're just drawing up Bay. We're just starting off how to draw Bay because, you know, some people have actually tried to draw on Bay and they don't seem to. They seem to be confused about some stuff, and I figured, you no, know, this would be a nice, uh, a nice start off. How to draw Bay. And there we go. There's Bay inked in. So I'm going to pull up my uh, my earlier picture of Bay. Which is what I actually pulled up from my, my reference file. So that way I can get all the, hair color, or all the colors right. Okay. Oops. Oh. Wrong mode. Okay, here we go. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually giving base base colors. But I'm putting it on a... Here's her line art. So I'll actually label these. I don't usually label them because it's just for me. But line art. And colors. And roughs. So, and don't have to worry about the other group. The other group was all that, all that demo stuff I gave you guys earlier. So, basically, you got the roughs, which was the black, the blue, and the greens. The color, which is what I'm doing now, and the line art. So I select the line art. I use uh, the wand tool to select the colors or where I want the color to be. Then I expand, expand it just by a couple pixels. So that because if I don't do that, what I found is, and there might be other ways to correct this, but when I don't do that, what I found is that the, the colors and the line won't won't 
won't be perfectly synced. So if we actually look at it really closely, I'll, I'll do another example here. Well, actually, here's a. I'll do an example with the T-shirt. Bay likes blue T-shirts, so we'll stick with blue. Now this is me not coloring it in, but not expanding it. So if you look really closely, you see all that white right there. When you, when I reduce this image, you'll be able to see that white, which won't look good. But if I expand it by a couple inches, or a couple pixels, I'm actually going underneath the underneath the black line arc. So if you look at the line art, see all the colors are just slightly underneath the line art. So that way when I reduce it, I'll actually the colors will butt right up to the line art nicely. Oops, missed a section there. This is one of the things that I'm always cursed with. I always miss little parts. I'll just cut it in manually. As I'm still in that color, I'll finish up for the legs. Now I'm coloring under a different layer. Um, so I have the color layer, which is underneath the line art layer. If I move above, you see all the reduced line art because I'm I'm making this the color palette larger than the line art. But it's underneath. So that way if I want to change the line art, I can't. I don't have to worry about the line the line art getting away. Okay, and I'm not going to give her blacks. Uh, let's give her a brownish skirt. Just, why not? Nah, nah, let's, let's, she does have a limited fashion sense. Yeah, let's go black. Black, black skirts are pretty much universal. Okay, so there is Bay third in. Now, take care of her eye. Because her eyes not skin color is white. Here we go. And let's put a dot in where her. There you go. Now, yeah, I could do the kind of big eye like this, so, but for comics, I, I think that the big eye takes time and it'll make them look right and whatnot. So for comics, I just use a dot. Yeah, it's not the easiest way to go or not the best way to go, but it, it's quicker than drawing a big detailed eye. Okay, make another layer. And we're going to call it a shading. Now, again... Because I'm showing you how I draw in the comics, not how I draw it when I, when I make, when I draw some nice, nice artwork. When I do a nice artwork, I spend a lot more time on it. And this is all, by the way, this is all at the speed. This is not sped up or anything like that. Because I don't really believe in, yeah, I can show you how to do it speeding up, you know. But it doesn't really help explain, it doesn't help you show things. Okay, so shading, I usually have a, I just use a black. I put in where the shading would be, where the shadow would be. And I'm just using black with, uh, with it so it's not full black. It's actually opaque by about 28, 28, or 24, 20, to 20, uh, the percent, depending on how dark it is in the, in the shining room. So wherever shadow might not should be shown, or wherever there might be shadow on person, that's where I'm putting, trying to put it. And shadow doesn't really show up on the black skirt very well.
And I'm just going to put some on our arms here. So the sun is basically, follow my logic here, the sun is basically up this area right up here. And it's, it's downwards. That's the light source. When you're doing a shot, you always got to kind of remember where is the light coming from. If it's coming from down, down here, it might not work so well. So I'm going to draw a circle just to show you where the light's coming from. So that would not be where the light's coming from. The light was coming from here. So those rays will be here, here, here. If I'm brightening, using brightening here, there, on our arm. So basically that was where the, the brightness would be. So for shading, I am trying to put dark wherever that that light would not be hitting. Now some people do this really well. I'm still kind of developing this process. Okay, let's get rid of the with the extra light beams and don't need the sun anymore so that is how to draw bay there is bay there's bay drawn and that's basically how you draw bay I uh, hope you enjoyed this I'll probably be doing more how to draws in the future but you know, we're just starting off the bay and seeing what you think Rather rough layer, and like I said, this is just a quick and dirty how to draw, um, so you get the basic idea. Remember, I start off with the roughs. I'll make, I'll bring down the resolution here, or bring down the oh, opaque C. So you start off the roughs, which would be uh, let's see here. So the blue. Then the green, give it a little more fine tune. Then I ink it in. And then I color it. And finally, after I color it, I put the shading in. Actually, the shading should be about 20%. Okay, and there is Bay. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. Actually, hit this button. There you go, that works. So I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, thanks for reading, and feel free to comment. All right. You all have a good day now.